Scotland and France. These nations in the E4 are both quite popular, and are relatively easy starting nations if you are a competent E4 player. Who doesn't want to play as Pirate Scotland? There's something also quite unique about the relationship between these two countries that starts centuries before the E4 start date. Over the centuries before E4, Scotland and France have had an active alliance, and this is one of the oldest alliances in history. In today's video, therefore, we discuss why France is guaranteeing Scotland at the start of the game, and why actually the alliance of the Scottish and French is much deeper and more intricate than can be shown in game. There's also potentially a few things Paradox could add when representing these diplomatic relations accurately. We already have some events in game representing it, and an E4 achievement as well. You can also make the case that Scotland saved France from the English, and this alliance is one of the reasons why England is so weak at the start of the game. Did you know Ulm has a medieval board game? That's right. Leif and I will go to Ulm and record ourselves playing this board game if we get to 100,000 subscribers. So make sure to click that button and the bell for daily content. Right, let's get into the video. The alliance began around the end of the 13th century. Scotland, with the death of a new young heir, Margaret the Maid of Norway, was in a political crisis, and it wasn't clear who should be the next Scottish king. With new candidates vying for the throne, Edward Longshank of England took this opportunity of turmoil and stepped in as mediator between all the Scottish candidates. Scotland needed him, in order to prevent civil war. Edward Longshank, however, would only become mediator if all candidates swear loyalty to him, meaning Scotland would then be under English control. At the time, with Edward choosing the new Scottish king, he had all the power, and he chose John Borleol. He was heavily undermined by Edward I, and was treated as a vassal state by the English. The new Scottish king John therefore grew tired of being whipped around by Edward, and looked for an opportunity to free himself of English control. At the same time, the English king had a very awkward situation with the French king. Edward Longshank was also the Duke of Aquitaine, and therefore was a vassal of the French king, Philippe the Fair. When Philippe stripped Edward of his Gascony lands, it led to the brink of war, which obviously led to both his countries seeking alliances. Therefore, Scotland and France signed a pact with one another, which happened in 1295 and both countries sought to limit the power of the English. The enemy of the enemy is a friend. France during this time also gained an alliance with the Norwegians, but the Norwegians never really took it seriously in comparison to the Scottish, and Scotland paid a heavy price for seeking an alliance with the French king. Edward Longshank was outraged and invaded Scotland because of this pact. The English crushed the Scottish at the Siege of Berwick and the Battle of Dunbar, and therefore Scottish independence was weak for some time. This clearly shows that the alliance was very ineffective at the beginning of it, which brings us onto just before the start date of EE4. So obviously, during the early years of this alliance, it was really actually quite bad, and we see this most clearly when the English defeated the French at the Battle of Cressy, and they also captured the Scottish King at the Battle of Neville's Cross. There was therefore deterioration between the relations of France and Scotland at the end of the 14th century. Perhaps these poor relations could have carried on, but a few decades before the start date of E4, we see a different picture. The Hundred Year War was getting intense within France, and at the start of the 15th century, a dynastic war ensued within Scotland. The Scottish king at the time, Robert, sent his son away to France, but he was captured by English pirates in 1406, and was held hostage in England. When his father Robert found out about it, he died of shock a few months later. Therefore, this captured prince became the new King of Scotland, and he was known as James I. For the next 18 years, James I was held hostage by the English, but over time he was seen as less of a prisoner and more as a guest. James was even knighted by the English King, and fought with the English against the French, and even Scottish. We therefore have this slightly weird situation, where the Scottish King was fighting against the French, and the Scottish people were fighting with the French, and we'll get onto that in a bit. What should be taken into consideration though, is that many people believed Scotland saved France from English dominance. After the decisive English victory at the Battle of Agincourt, France was on its knees, and the Dauphin asked Scotland for help. The Scottish leaders at the time, with the absence of the Scottish King, sent 12,000 troops to France. 
The Scottish French army then defeated the English at the Battle of the Bulg and killed the English king's brother, the Duke of Clarence, who underestimated the strength of the Scottish French army. This gave the Dauphin breathing space, but these gains were quickly stopped a few years later at one of the bloodiest battles of the Hundred Years' War, and it was known as the Battle of Ennu, and it was a disastrous defeat for the Scots. Having said this, many Scots remained in France and supported Joan of Arc in her campaign against the English, and in the crucial siege of Orleans, which was a turning point in the Hundred Year War. Over time, many Scots decided to settle in France. The Old Alliance wasn't simply a military alliance, a commercial alliance also developed, which was founded on the Scots' love of wine, which obviously was made in France. This maybe could somehow be represented with an EE4, in order to make the game more interesting. Maybe some sort of trading events could be added in, or a negative unrest event, with French wine coming to Scotland. In the years leading up to EE4, James I of Scotland was released, and wanted to become a confident and independently minded European monarch. He did renew the Old Alliance, but the effectiveness of this alliance with France had virtually ceased after that bloody battle, and its revival in 1428 did not alter that fact. James actually adopted a much more non-aligned position with England, France and Burgundy. He was eventually assassinated in 1437, and his son James II took the throne, who is the starting Scottish leader in the EU4. You can see him here with fairly average stats. The EE4 Scottish King, James II, had a fairly traumatic childhood, and the Scottish clans manipulated him, meaning he effectively had no power at the beginning of his reign. Since the king was just a boy, and had his own internal problems, the alliance between Scotland and France was relatively weak at the start date of EU4, which is a significant contrast to just a few decades ago. Scotland did, however, want to support the House of Valois, and attacked the English at the Battle of Sark in 1448, which was a Scottish victory. By the end of the Hundred Year War, which is around the start date of EU4, it's clear that the alliance was almost obsolete, and England was plunged into civil war. The Scottish King, James II, took this opportunity to invade the English castle of Roxburgh and Berwick, but he died due to a cannon misfire, which is definitely a little unlucky. I wouldn't be opposed to having an event that fires an E4, when the Scottish leader is a general in E4, and is sieging an English fort with a cannon in his army, leading to the death of his Scottish King. Just quite a small historical touch, that could add to an English or Scottish campaign. There also could maybe be some more events surrounding the old alliance, with maybe an immigration event of Scottish to the French lands, if the English take over Scotland. We see this with the Byzantines and Grenadines when they get wiped out. At the end of the day, Scotland actually made a deal with Margaret of Anjou in order to support the Lancastrian side. Both France and Scotland wanted to maintain England in this weak state, and maybe some EU4 events could surround the Lancastrians getting both a French and Scottish support if the Yorkists are winning within EU4. Now one question is, should France be guaranteeing Scotland at the start of the game, when the alliance was obsolete at this point? Well actually, I'd say two things for why this is a good thing. Firstly in EU4, even though England is weak, with the War of Roses disaster coming up, it's still very easy for England to completely wipe out Scotland without the protection of a powerful ally like France. Historically, if England did a full-scale invasion of Scotland, then it's highly likely France would aid Scotland, and the old alliance would no longer be obsolete. This is alternative history, obviously, but you can make a solid case for it, and that's probably why France is guaranteeing Scotland, even though it's not an active alliance. How do you guys think this alliance should be represented in game though? Should Paradox add more flavour surrounding these two nations? Or have they done enough and there's more important things to consider? Let me know in the comments. Thank you guys for watching, make sure to subscribe, and we'll be streaming when this video is live. Shout out to our Patreons, Jodo52, Cargan, Flyerton, Henrique, Redguard76, and Xiaomi. Your support means a lot guys.